Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a new layer using GIMP 2.10. This is GIMP version 2.10.10 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP video tutorials and help articles on here so definitely check that out if you haven't already. You can also enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. So today's tutorial actually already has a GIMP help article on my website. If you guys prefer to read how to do this on here, and of course I have this brand new translation feature up here. So if you want to, you can translate this help article into your native language. So for example, I can go with Spanish here. And this will translate everything over to Spanish. If I'm missing your language here in the translations, then please just leave me a comment below in the video and I'll try to get your language added to the translation feature on my website. But I'll just minimize this. So this is a GIMP Basics tutorial and it's meant for beginners, although I do think intermediate and advanced users will still gain something from this tutorial because we're going to be doing a deep dive into how to create a new layer in GIMP and I'm going to be showing you all of the features found in the Create a New Layer dialog box. And to start, we do need a new document or a new image open, so I'll go to File, New. You cannot create a new layer when you do not have an image open, so if you've been struggling to create a new layer and nothing's been happening and you haven't had a new composition open, that's why. So for starters, you can set your image size here. I have this set to 1920 by 1080, which is the standard high definition size. You can change this to whatever value you want just by typing it in, so I'll put 1280 by 720. And if I come down here to the advanced options, you'll see I also have X and Y resolution. Just know for that, 300 is going to be usually for print and 72 is going to be for web. So for example, if I change this to 72, hit the tab key, that'll change both of the X and Y to 72. And then the only other thing I'll cover in this tutorial for now is going to be the fill width. And right now this is set to background color, which means this is going to fill this with black. And the fill width option is going to create our very first layer, which is going to be our background layer. So you always need a background layer to be able to create new layers as you go on. And by default, it's going to show up as background and we can always change the name of that layer a little bit later on. But for now, I'm going to come over here and just change this to fill with white. And that's just going to create a background layer with white. And I'll click OK. So here you'll see we now have our background layer over here. This is called the Layers panel right here. This is one of the five main areas within GIMP. So this is the Layers, Channels, Paths, and Undo section. I have my Paths and my Undo History options switched, but usually it's about right there. So Layers, Channels, Paths, Undo. So the Layers panel is a dockable dialog, which means we can click and move this around. I'm not going to get into that too much for this tutorial either. Just know that the first layer you create is going to be your background layer. And now we have a few tools open over here in our Layers panel. So we have the Create a New Layer option. We have the Layer Group option. These two are grayed out. We have the Duplicate Layer option. This one's grayed out. And then we have the ability to add a layer mask and the ability to delete our layer. So I'm only going to cover this option right here for this tutorial, and this is the Create a New Layer option. So when I click on that, that is going to bring up the Create a New Layer dialog box. And the first option here is the layer name. So this is going to be this right here, this name that's shown up for our background layer. That's your layer name. So for this one, we'll just name this New Layer. And I'll just create this layer real quick just to show you what happens. So now we have a layer over here, and it's named New Layer. Let me delete that layer using the delete this layer icon and just go back to the create a new layer option. So our layer name is new layer and this is always going to show up as the last layer name you created. The next option here is a color tag. So this allows you to add like a color label and it's going to place it right here over the show hide icon. So if I come over here and I set my color tag to something like maroon, uh, I think that's more of a brown color or a red. So let's go with red and click OK. You'll see now we have a color tag over here to the left of our layer, right where the show hide icon is. Let me just delete that layer again. So that's what the color tag option does. If you click this first option here, that's just going to set this without a color tag. 
Next is the mode, and this is going to allow you to set the layer mode of your new layer. So there are 38 layer modes found in GIMP, and that's actually more than Photoshop in case you're wondering. I do actually have a tutorial covering all 38 layer modes found in GIMP. I recommend checking that out before you mess with this, and I'll link that in the video. But I do recommend when you're creating a new layer that unless you really know what you want your brand new layer blending mode or your layer mode to be, you just keep it set to normal. That's just going to allow your layer to be a normal layer when you first create it. But if you click this drop down, you'll see that you do have all 38 layer mode options in here that you can set this to. And you can also come over here and you could change this to the default, which is going to be the latest set of layer modes found in GIMP 2.10.10 or whatever version you're using. And then the legacy option allows you to choose older layer modes found in older versions of GIMP. So I'm just going to keep this set to default and I'm also going to set the layer mode to normal. The blend space will always be grayed out here, so this is just always going to be set to auto. Next up you have the composite space, so if I click the drop down here you can see we start with auto and then we have RGB linear and RGB perceptual. So a composite image is in its simplest form just the red, green, and blue channels as well as the alpha channel which represents transparency all blended together to create the image that you see while you're editing in GIMP. So it's basically just the normal image you see with all the colors together. So what the composite space does is it allows you to display how the light in your image is displayed. So RGB linear is going to display the lightness in your image or the way the light is displayed in your image, the way that light would be displayed in the real world. So it's more of like a mathematical concept really, whereas RGB perceptual is going to display the light in your image the way your I see the light in the world. So that is going to be more so how we're used to perceiving light. And therefore, when you go with RGB perceptual, that's typically going to create the better image. So I typically always go with RGB perceptual and I recommend you guys do the same. So go with RGB perceptual here or you could just go with auto. Next up we have composite mode and this has to do with whenever you are using a layer that has a blending mode or a layer mode set. So remember up here we have the option to set a layer mode. You also have the option over here after the layer is created to set a layer mode. But the composite mode is going to determine how the two layers that are interacting with one another using a layer mode are going to basically create a final result. So usually when you have a layer mode, you have the top layer, which is just known as the layer, and you have the bottom layer known as the backdrop. These two layers are interacting with one another and creating an effect based on the layer mode you have set. Usually that effect creates something called a union, which is going to be a combination of the objects in the layer and the backdrop. However, you can change the composite mode, or in other words, you can change what the final result is going to be between those two layers interacting. So for starters, it's set to auto, which means whatever the automatic setting is for the layer mode you select is going to be the composite mode that ends up showing up as the final result. So the first option here below auto is going to be union. This again is going to be the most popular composite mode because this is typically what layer modes use. It's going to use the blended result from the pixels in your layer or the top layer with the backdrop or the bottom layer. And so therefore, if you have two objects on, you know, one on each separate layer, then both of those objects are gonna show up with a blended result. And I know you guys might be a little bit confused right now, so let me demonstrate with an example. So I'm gonna set my composite mode for my first layer to auto. And let me actually rename my layer name to backdrop because this is going to be the bottom layer. And I have the layer mode set to normal, so I'll click OK. I'll come over here and create another new layer. This one I'm gonna name layer because the top layer whenever we are blending two layers is just called the layer. I'm also gonna come down here and change the layer mode to overlay. And now I'll change the composite mode here to union. And I'll click okay. I'm gonna also hide the background for this example because actually the composite mode only really takes effect when there is transparency set up as the background. So both of our layers were created with transparent backgrounds and we've hidden the background layer. Now what I'm gonna do is click on the backdrop layer and I'm gonna come over and grab my paintbrush tool. I'll change the color of this to a blue color and click OK. And I've got the opacity set up all the way to 100 for my brush. The size is just a random size I picked here. You can always adjust it. And the harness is set to 10, so this is a fairly soft brush. Now I'm just going to draw a circle here with my paintbrush, so here's a blue circle. Now I'm going to click on my layer, the top layer here, come over here and change my color to green and click OK. And now I'm going to paint a green circle 
And you can see it's green on the right where it doesn't intersect at all with the pixels on the backdrop layer. And it's a lighter blue anywhere where the pixels from the two layers intersect. But the main point from this is that both objects are going to be here, and that's what the Union Composite Mode does, is it keeps the pixels from both layers here, and therefore keeps both objects. On the other hand, when we are creating a new layer, we can set the Composite Mode to something else. So let me come over here and create a new layer again. And this time the Composite Mode you can set to Clip to Backdrop. So remember the backdrop is going to be our bottom layer. So clip to backdrop basically means that only the pixels from the bottom layer and the overlapping pixels from where the top layer and the bottom layer intersect are going to be kept. So it's only the backdrop layer pixels and the intersected pixels. And I'm actually going to hit cancel because we can come over here to our layer, right click on it, go to composite mode, and you can change the composite mode from here. So now I'll change this to clip to backdrop. So here you'll see only the pixels from the backdrop layer and the intersected area are kept. So the next composite mode, if I right click and go to composite mode, is going to be clip to layer. So that is only going to keep the pixels from the top layer and the portion where the two layers intersect. So let me click on clip to layer. So there you can see the pixels from the top layer and the intersecting pixels are kept. And the last composite mode, if I right click, go back to composite mode, is intersection. So that's only going to keep the pixels from the intersecting area right here. So I'll click intersection, and those are the only pixels kept. So there are your composite modes. Let me just delete these two layers that we created, and we'll start back with the background layer. So I'll unhide that, and come back here to create a new layer. And I'll just rename this new layer again, set the mode back to normal, and that will automatically shift the composite mode back to auto. So that was all of our composite modes. The next option here is the opacity. So this is how opaque or transparent your new layer is going to be. And the best way to tell whether or not your layer is transparent or opaque is to have some sort of pixels on that layer. So for this example, I'm going to change the fill width here to our foreground color, which is going to be this green color right here. Right now this is set to 100%, which means this is going to be fully opaque or will not contain any transparency. So you guys can see this is set to 100% up here and we can see all of the green. If I delete this layer, go back to create a new layer and we set the opacity slider by clicking on it. You can see an arrow right here and I can drag this to something like 50% and we still have this set to fill with foreground color and click OK. Now our opacity is turned down to about 50%, so we can't see as much of the green, which means some of the white layer below that is showing up. And of course I can control the opacity of the layer from right here inside the layers panel. But I'll come back over here and delete this layer and come back to create a new layer. And you can actually manually set the opacity value here, so I can just type in 25. That'll set the opacity to 25%. I'll just turn this all the way back up to 100 for now. The next option is the width and the height. So you can actually make your layer a different size than the boundary of your overall image. So you can make the layer smaller than the overall composition or you can make it larger than the overall composition. Let me show you an example where it's larger. So if I come over here and make this 1920 by 1080, and of course you could change the units right here, but I'm just gonna keep these set to pixels and I'll click okay. So hold control and zoom out a bit. You can see that my layer is larger than the overall composition, so it goes a little bit off the page. Let me switch my color over here to black and turn down the size of my paintbrush. So you'll see that when I paint on my new layer here, which is the larger layer, the black is going to show up right here where the layer is inside of our composition. But if I start to paint my layer and it goes off the composition, you'll see that'll disappear. So these pixels will not show up. And if I go to export this, the pixels outside the composition boundary will not show up. If I hit the M key to grab my move tool, I can move this layer. So you can see that all those pixels that I was drawing on this layer are still here. I just have to drag them so that they're inside of my layer boundary or my composition boundary here. And you can always tell where your layer boundary is by these dotted yellow lines right here that go around the outside of your layer and that's going to show up on the layer that you're clicked on or your active layer. So right now, our new layer is our active layer. If I click on the background layer, that will be our active layer, and you can see the yellow dotted lines or the yellow dashed lines show up here. So whatever layer you have as your active layer is going to be the layer boundary that shows up here. So let me just delete that layer. 
Now I'll come back here to the create a new layer icon again. This time I'm going to create a layer that is smaller than the overall size of our composition. So I'm going to create a 500 by 500 layer and click OK. So you can see our layer right now is smaller than our overall composition size. This one is black because I have the fill width set to foreground and that's our foreground color. So again, I can use my move tool to move this around inside our composition or I can move it off the page if I want. But as you can see, the layer can also be smaller than the overall size of our composition. So delete that layer. And I'll come back here to create a new layer. So the next option here below our width and our height is going to be the offset options. So usually when you create a new layer, it's going to be perfectly aligned with the top left portion of your composition. That's just where GIMP automatically places the new layer once you create it. When you use the offset X and Y options, that allows you to offset either vertically or horizontally from the usual placement of your new layer. So for example, if I offset the X, that is going to offset the horizontal axis or the axis that's going from left to right. And if I set this to 200, for example, this is right now set to pixels. You can, of course, change the unit here. That is going to offset our new layer by 200 pixels from the X axis. So if I come over here and click OK, you'll see our new layer is 200 pixels to the right. You can use the rulers up top here to see, or you can come down here and wherever your mouse is, is going to be the unit. So you can see this is about 200 pixels to the right. Let me delete that layer. Click create a new layer again. I can also offset based on the Y axis. So that is going to be the up and down axis. And for this one, let me change this to 200 pixels and click OK. So once again, this is offset by 200 pixels. So this is 200 pixels down from the top portion of our image. So I'll just delete that layer once again. And the last option here is one we went over when we first started this tutorial, and that is the ability to fill this in with either transparency or with a color. So you can go with your foreground color that's currently selected, which is how we have this set up now. That's why the layer we just created in my offset example was black, because that's what our foreground is set to. You can also change this to background color, so that'll create our new layer with this green color. Or you could set this to white, so that'll just fill this in with this white color here. Transparency, which of course means the layer will be entirely see-through. Or pattern, which means whatever active pattern you have set up will be what the new layer you create is filled with. So let's go with pattern here just as an example. And you can see our brushes, gradients, and patterns dock over here. Of course, if you don't have any of these docks, you can come over here and go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and you can choose any of the docks here within GIMP. And up here is the pattern stock. So let's just set this leopard pattern here as our active pattern and I'll click OK. So now our new layer created has this leopard pattern. So as you guys saw with the composite mode, a lot of these settings can be changed directly on the layer just by coming over here in the layers panel and right clicking on the layer. So you can see here you can edit the layer attributes, which is basically going to bring up that create a new layer dialog box, although this option is going to have a little bit less options. So let me exit out of that. I can right click and I can change the composite space. I can change the composite mode. I can add a color tag and I can perform a series of other actions here, which I'm not going to go over for this tutorial. But actually one last thing I want to show you guys is if I come back here to the create a new layer icon, there's something over here called switches. So by default, the visible option is going to be checked, which means when you create a new layer, it's automatically going to be visible. This is the show hide icon here. So if I uncheck this option and I create this new layer, you'll see that by default, this is going to be hidden, but I can always, and let me hide this bottom layer here. I can always unhide this new layer we created, but by default, this will be created hidden. Let me delete both of these layers and create a new layer. You also have some other options here. So linked is going to enable something called the transform lock icon. So that just means that if you have another layer or multiple layers linked together in your composition, Anytime you perform a transformation on one of those layers, so something like the scale tool, it's going to perform that scale on all of the layers that you have linked. So this automatically links your layer to start when you create it. You can also lock pixels, which means you won't be able to paint anything on that layer. You can lock the position in size, which means you won't be able to perform any transformations on here, or you won't be able to move that layer. 
and you can lock the alpha, which means if you try to do anything to the transparent portion of the layer, in other words, if you try to use the eraser tool or something, it's not going to have any effect on the alpha channel or on the transparent part of your layer. But by default, I'm going to uncheck all of these and only keep the visible switch option checked here. And once again, I can click OK. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can visit my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can check out any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.